I think you know, precision agriculture is another example where there's a lot of robotics in it, sort of GPS controlled combines and things like that that's clearly had a big impact on productivity. Yeah, and at the expansive end, and now can we make right. cheap robots that for African agriculture, smallholders actually uh, would, would help out? Hi, um, so my name is Jasmine. I'm from Beijing, China. I'm a freshman. My major is undecided. Um, I want to start this by telling a little story when I was young. So when I was young, like, we have your short. <laughs> my parents and my um, friends and my teachers will always ask me, what would you want to be when you grow up? And I'm, my answer was always, I want to be one of the richest person in, in the world. So here I am, here you are. So if, <laughs> so if A is equal to B and B is equal to C, that means A is equal to C. So I want to be you, <laughs> I guess. And so what, what is one word of advice that you would give to someone like me to become someone like you? <laughs> OK, well, I, <laughs> I didn't start out with the dream of, of being super rich. Uh, and even after we started Microsoft and the guys who ran Intel, uh, you know, Gordon Moore and those guys were billionaires, I was like, wow. That must be strange. And so, it is, it's quite strange. Uh, uh, but, you know, so a little bit I think most people who've done well have sort of found something that they just are kind of nuts about doing. And, you know, then they figure out a system to hire their friends to do it with them. And if, you're, if, it's, if it's an area of, of great impact, then sometimes you get sort of financial independence. But wealth above a certain level really is just, you know, it, it's, it's a responsibility uh, that then you're going to have to either A, leave it to your children, which may or may not be good for them, uh, or B, you know, try to be smart about, about giving it away. So I can understand wanting to have millions of dollars. Um, you know, that's you know, because there, there's certain freedom, meaningful freedom that comes with that. But once you get much beyond that, um, you know, I have to tell you, it's, it's the same hamburger. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, you know, Dix has not raised their prices enough. Uh, so, but, you know, being ambitious is good. Um, you just have to pick what you, you enjoy doing. All right, we've got time for two more very quick questions, please. Over here. Hi, my name is Pauline Ross. I'm a computer science and industrial engineering student. Um, to kind of play devil's advocate for a minute, there's been a lot of information coming out. Impacted uh, kids these days. Um, they can't read body language as well, relate to each other as well, speak as well. Um, and so I was kind of wondering how you felt about that and what you feel like some of the responsibilities of computer scientists and other people who generate this technology are to society. Well, we should always measure um, the good impacts and the bad impacts of the stuff we have. You know, certainly whenever a new technology comes along, there's a lot of fear about what it's going to do. You know, when the printing press came along, there was a great fear that people would just read books and not go out and seek, you know, real experiences. And, and, you know, I tried that when I was that kid, just reading books. And, you know, maybe I'd be more rounded if, if there hadn't been books around. So, I, I, you know, I think it's hard. I don't, I haven't seen any evidence of any significance that socialization has really broken down in some bad way. You know, I know that, you know, with Skype now, I meet my daughter's uh, boyfriend's parents uh, when I walk into her bedroom, uh, and there they are on, on Skype. So socialization is changing, but I don't think, I'm not sure you can really say that there's a, a negative vector there. And there's so many positive vectors about if you're curious and you want to learn something. You know, I was young and I'd ask a question about, hey, what's fertilizer? You know, if the World Book didn't have it, I, I wasn't going to get the answer. Now, of course, you can go online, watch videos, and, and you know, my children are always asking questions where if I don't know the answer, we just go and it's actually kind of fun to learn it together. So I'd say on balance, uh, you know, I think we're quite, 
quite far ahead. You know, there are some things about privacy, you know, maybe misuse of, overuse of pornography, you know, letting your kids play too many video games, so you have to set a quota, just like I had to have a quota for how much I was allowed to read. But, uh, you know, I think overwhelmingly, we've got mostly positive things, including the opportunity ahead of us of how the tool gets used in mainstream education. Okay, because I promised one last question, very quickly, please. All right, um, my name is Xing, and I'm an electrical engineering major. Um, I'm not gonna ask you anything about politics or um, how to be a rich man or something. Just, uh, just wondering, um, a really quick question. So, from personal computer to um, internet, and now is smartphones, well, mobile internet. What will be the next generation um, of the technology, and what would be the future um, of the technology? Well, in a sense, the only difference between a phone and a PC is sort of the screen size. You have, you have the size of the screen and the input technique. And so, you know, in a classroom, you have a big, big, big wall, uh, and in your pocket, you have this, this little device. The next generation is either a screen that you can fold out to any size that you want, kind of going back to the papyrus scroll, or uh, more likely it's, it's simply projecting onto your retina. Uh, because if you want to get a very high projection experience, if I have a projection ability, I can just, and I have a camera that's watching my gestures, I can just say, okay, I want a newspaper this size, and I can get perfect HD res resolution right in front of me. And the cost and weight of having that capability is almost zero. So, you know, eventually we'll laugh that there were these big flat glass screens that were expensive, and if you dropped them, you broke. All you're trying to do is put stuff on your eye, that's all. So what a weird contraption, all these LCD chemicals and chips and things, you're just trying to project into my eye. Why don't you just go ahead and paint uh, there? So I do think that's the display technology. Now then you get into the pervasive sensors and the robots and things that mean that the dividing line between this is a computer A, this is computer B sort of gets lost in that picture. So the pervasiveness and the, uh, perhaps the projection are, are, along with the new interaction techniques are where it takes on a different form. So before we thank Bill, I'd like to take a minute and invite Bill Gates Sr. up to the stage. It's uh, a real privilege to have both Bill Gates' here today. And uh, th the actual reason for this is that even Bill Gates has a birthday and it's tomorrow. So I'm uh, <laughs> hoping that you will join Dad. Thank you. Bill Gates, thank you so very much for being here today. All right, wonderful, thank you. Thanks to all of you.